Assalamu alaikum everyone. So today we will be having uh, lecture number 25 and we will be talking about shift registers, right? And these are the bullets which or points which we will be going through one by one, right? Uh, how we normally store more than one bits and what is the requirement in order to store more than one bit, one, one bit right? Because uh, when we talk about the uh, flip-flops, right? So it is a storage element and we can store one bit, right? So how uh, we have to handle uh, those flip-flops if we want to store more than one bit, right? So this is very natural, right? That we have to connect or uh, concatenate or cascade those different flip-flops in order to store more than one bit right so whenever we have more than one flip-flops connected we can store more than one bit and we can call it a register right and uh, obviously whenever we talk about the data so we have to move the data right from one part within uh, the computer to another part within the same computer or maybe from one place to another place right uh, so for that we need shift right so we need to shift the data so uh, we call normally those uh, different circuits right as shift registers right so uh, there are two mechanisms to transfer data one is parallel and the other is serial right so how we can build uh, registers in order to shift data parallel and how we have to build the registers in order to move or shift the data serially, right? So obviously what we need, uh, we need uh, sequential logic that is required for the storage, right? And on the other hand, we need the combinational in order to have a control over, right? For example, if we want to have a parallel transfer of data, right? We need a different control and if we have uh, the serial data transfer, we need some other combination logic, right? So these are the points which we will be discussing, right? So let's talk about the parallel register, right? Or parallel data loading. So here you can see that we have the storage elements, right? Flip-flops, right? And they are connected right in this way right so you can see that we have uh, D this is clock and this is the reset right so they are these are the inputs right and these are the output right and here uh, on the arrival of the clock what will happen this data will be loaded that is present at the input of each flip-flop into the flip-flop right so if you, we want to make sure that uh, all the flip-flops have zeros so what we need to do we need to reset all the flip-flops right so here you can see a bubble right so as a result of this bubble we have active low clear right so whenever we have zero here all the flip-flops will be reset right so this is a sort of asynchronous reset or asynchronous clear right Okay, and on the arrival of the clock, right, for example, if we have, let's talk about an example, right? So here we have, for example, we have 1, we have 0, right? And here we have 1, and we have another 0 here, right? So what will happen on the arrival of the clock as we know that Q follows D so here uh, instead of Q, Q we have A0, A1, A2 and A3 on those different flip-flops right so what we will be having on the arrival of the active clock pulse we will be having a 1 here right a 0 here right and 1 here right and 0 here right so same data will be loaded but in a parallel mode, right? So we have 
loaded the data in a parallel mode right and we have loaded more than one bits right so here we have the same parallel loading right but uh, what is uh, different from this previous parallel loading or register parallel register you can say we have used different flip flops sr flip flops right moreover you can see that here we have the combinational logic at the before the input of the flip flop right so you can say this is a sort of combinational and sequential logic right so what is the advantage of this uh, combinational logic at the input input of the flip flop right so here we have more control right we can load the data whenever we want right whenever we don't want to load the data uh, what values uh, will be available at the input right uh, irrespective of those values uh, there will be nothing that is loaded right so whenever we want to load we have to make this load load signal activate right or we need to activate this load signal right so here uh, we can have an example right so for example whenever we have so this is the inverter right so here if we have one here right so this one will be passed here so this is this is zero so this zero will be one as a result of this inverter so we will be having a one here right so this one is inverted and we will be having a zero here we will be having a zero here right and we have a one here so as a result we have a zero right so what we will be having whenever we have one at one of the i's right so here one zero so s is equal to one and r is equal to zero right and uh, for i is equal to zero what we will be having right so here we can have i is equal to zero right so you can see that uh, as a result of this zero right we have a zero here right and this zero will be one right and load is uh, one so we will be having a one here right so we have s0 and r is equal to 1 right s0 and r is equal to 1 whenever we have i0 right and we know the truth table of sr flip flop right so you can have an idea that uh, whenever we have load active load then uh, the data will be loaded right otherwise they are will not be loaded right so this is uh, loading but with more control right so this is uh, something different if we compare this with this loading right so uh, this is the same uh, scenario parallel loading but over here we have used a different flip-flop that is the flip-flop right and we have the combinational logic at the input of each flip-flop right and uh, there is one more difference right over here uh, like uh, you can see that we have a feedback if we go back there is no feedback over here the reason for this feedback is that because uh, whenever we talk about this SR flip-flop right so there is a uh, A combination of SR where we have no change right so in case of D flip-flop we don't have any value of D where we don't have any condition of no change right so in order to have that condition we have introduced that feedback right so this is the output of the flip-flop and that is feedback for this AND gate right so we can have uh, for example if we have load 1 right 
and we have for example 0 here 1 here 1 here and 1 here right so uh, that will be 1 right so we have 1 here right and as a result of this 0 we have a 0 here right so depending upon the uh, depending upon this feedback right we have for example if we uh, we have uh, for example 0 right so what we will be having we will be having a 0 right as a result of this 0 if we have a 1 here right so we have a 1 here right and this is 0 right because we have connected this from here right so we have a 0 so again we have a 0 and as a result of that we have a 0 here and that 0 will be because Q follows D so here Q uh, is A naught right so we have a 0 here so in both cases either we have a 0 or we have a 1 right so if we have a 1 here right so 1 and that is 1 so we have a 1 here right so again feedback so we can check both the combinations 0 and 1 right so this is 0 so irrespective of the other right because uh, at the input of this AND gate if we have 1 0 right so we will be having a 0 right so 0 1 1 and you can see that we will be having a 1 here right so uh, we have to made load 1 in order to load the data right whenever load is equal to 0 uh, you can ch check this out right in case of load 0 right so we have 1 here right and we have a 0 here so as a result of this 1 right so you can calculate and you will see that uh, whenever we have uh, load 0 so we can calculate this right so because uh, we have values uh, written over there so in case of 0 we can go for this right so this 0 uh, we have a 1 here right and we have a 0 here right so so if we have a 0 here right you can have 0 here right and 0 here right so remember uh, we have assumed that the output is 0 of this D flip flop right so that is feedback for this end right and we have a 0 and 0 will be here right so it means uh, no change right if we have a 1 for example so that one will be feedback for this end we have a 1 here and you can see that we have 1 so there will be no change right so let's talk about sequential logic implementation regarding the registers right so you can see uh, that here we have the block diagram uh, right and we have a combinational circuitry over here and this is the register right and uh, as a result of this register right uh, we have different state values right so this is the clock pulse and this is the input right so you can see that we have as a result of uh, uh, this combinational logic right we will be having the input from this combinational circuitry to this sequential circuitry that is the register right and this is uh, combinational circuitry is also involved for right so input and this is the feedback and this is the output right so uh, uh, we can have an idea that how we can exploit registers when we talk about the 
sequential implementation, right? So here you can have an idea that uh, what we have, we have different states depending upon the register, right? Um, maybe if we have, uh, uh, for example, if we have uh, two uh, bit register, right? So how many states we can have? We can have four different states, right? So that depends on the uh, number of bits involved within that register, right? So uh, we can have different state values, right? So here you can see that uh, the present state, right, of the register, right, uh, the input, right, and uh, as a result, what we will be getting, we will be getting the next state, right? So here we have the uh, present data that is stored within this register. So as a result of this present state uh, that is applied uh, onto this combination circuitry and these are the inputs, right? So what we'll be, we will be having, we will be having the next state, right? So the reason for the introduction of the, those registers that uh, they are very effectively and uh, efficiently available for medium scale integrate, integrated circuits, right? So we can employ those registers as a part of the sequential circuitry, right? So this is the scenario where we can deploy uh, a register in order to have the sequential circuitry, right? Okay, let's talk about an example, right? So here, uh, what we have to do, we have to design a sequential circuit. So for that, we need to start from somewhere else. So here we are given the state table, right? So you can see that in that state table we have uh, present state, right? And then we have the input, right? And uh, next, in the next column, we have the next state and the output, right? So you can see we have those equations uh, mentioning. So this is the next state, right? And this is the output. So if I talk about uh, the, because we need to calculate or we need to represent those uh, states, uh, right? Right, and uh, find, and then after uh, having the, those states, we need to represent them by using the Boolean expressions, right? So here you can see we have uh, one at fourth position, right? So this is the sixth position. So if I write here, right? So let me write down here. So here we have M naught, right? This is M1, right? This is M2, right? And this is M3, M4, right? M5, M6, and M7, right? So for A1, right? Let me write down the main terms, right? So we have four, for four, we have A1, right? So I have to mention this is T plus one, right? So I'm writing this in the subscript. And if I have no subscript, so it means that uh, we have the T, right? So this is the convention I have set, right? So A1, A2, right? A1, A2, and we have bar and X bar, right? Plus, uh, we have to write down this sixth, right? This is the M6, right? For M6, what I will be having, I will be having A1, A2, right, and X bar. So what I can have, I can have A1, X bar as common, so A2 bar plus A2, so this is what, this is one, so I will left with A1, X, right? So this is the Boolean expression for A, right? 1, T plus 1, right? 
So you can see we have uh, the next state and this is the next state in terms of the present state and the input, right? right? Similarly, uh, for A2, we need to do the same, right? So again, I will be writing, writing down the main terms, right? So for A2, I have to write down A1 bar, A2 bar, right, and X, right, because we have a 1 here. For this, I have A1 bar, A2, simple, right, and AX, right, bar. Right, here for this, we have A1, A2 bar, and x right because we have a one here for this we have a one a two and x bar right so these are the four terms we need to have for a two into t plus one a one bar a two bar x plus a one bar a two and x bar right and then uh, we have a1 a2 bar x right plus a1 a2 x bar right so here we need to make the pairs right so what I can do so I can take so I have to join so how we can have the joining right right so if I talk about this right so from here I can take the a1 bar right as common so a2 bar x plus a2 x bar right so again from here I can take a1 common right so a2 bar x right plus a2 x bar right so this is plus so there's no uh, equal sign here because these are these terms that are included in this boolean expression right so there's no uh, equal sign so what I can do so we have this common right so a2 bar x right plus a2 x bar right into a1 plus a1 bar right so this is what one so we will have a2 bar x plus a2 x bar right so this is what this is equal to a2 zord with x right so this we have right similarly we can have the expression for y so y is a function of a1 a2 because this is the output so normally so here you can see that we have uh, a2 that is dependent on the present state and the input but for y we have uh, represented y because this is the output right so you can see we have a1, a2, and x, right? So for this, we have, for y, what we can have, we can have a1 bar, a2, right, x, and this is the last one, so a1, a2, and x, right? So a1 plus bar plus a1, right and a2 x is common right so this is what one so we are left with this a2 x so this is the boolean expression right so uh, and this is the circuitry right so next uh, step is to draw the circuitry so you can see that for these are the block diagrams right or uh, you can have a1 a2 right so for a1 right uh, you, this is a1 
and this is the next state right so you can see we have a1 ended with x bar so this is x bar and this is a1 right okay and then we have a2 zord with x right so here we have a2 zord with x right and for y we have a2 and x right so there is a feedback also you can see that this is rep this represents the feedback right because you can have an idea this is the next state and this is the previous state for that we need to have a feedback shift to the shift register or move to the shift register right so here we have uh, four flip-flops right and we have uh, connected those flip-flops in a chain right so you can see that uh, sort of cascading this is one two three four four flip-flops right and they have the common clock right and this is the serial input and this is the serial output right so if we have uh, a string of one zero one one right so this is the serial input if I apply this string of ones and zeros right so what will happen on the arrival of the clock that one will be loaded here and we have a one here right on the next clock that one will be moved here and next one will be here right on the third clock we have a zero here one here one here on the fourth clock we have the one here right zero here one here one here right so after that we will be having the serial out right so here we have one right after the next clock and it depends uh, what sort of uh, input after this string we will be having right so this is the uh, shift register right but here uh, we have the same clock for all the flip-flops right and you can have uh, the idea of serial in and serial out right right so this is uh, again uh, serial transfer right we want to show here serial transfer but here we have two shift registers right and again we have for those if I show this register as a block right so you can name it shift register right and this is serial in right and this is serial out so what we have here we have serial register a right so inside circuitry will be like that right so here serial, serial in serial out so this is the second shift register again serial in serial out and this is the clock pulse right and uh, here you can see that the clock is ended with the shift control right so if we have shift control high right uh, and both the clock uh, is also high right then we will be having the shifting right so this is the after the AND gate uh, implementation you can see this is the clock and this is uh, sort of periodic signal and it will continue like this forever and this is the shift control right so after the AND operation right so you can see that we have uh, this is the output and we have tagged this output with CP and this is the clock pulse and we have T1, T2, T3 and T4 right so after having the AND operation and you can see that here we have 1, 1 we will be having this level right so here again uh, 0, 1, 0, 1, 1, 1, 0, 1, 0, 1, 1, 1, right, 0, 1, 0, and this is, uh, and these are the clock pulses uh, as a result of this end operation over the clock and the shift control, we will be having those clock pulses, T1, T2, and T3, T4, right, so uh, here you can have the idea that how uh, the data is actually moving right so this is the initial state for the register A right we have uh, 1010 if I talk about this so you can assume that we have 
1011 within those flip flops right so this is shift register B right so we have 0010 and this is the serial out right and this is SO right on the arrival of the first clock uh, because we have to shift right make a right shift right so you can see that that one is going here that zero is going here and that one is going here right right and that one because they are cascaded those registers are cascaded so that one will go here zero here zero here and one here right and we will be having a one because this one will be the output right very next to the output so we have a one here as an output so in the next clock zero here one here one here right and we have a one here and that one will move here right and that one will move here zero here and zero here and that zero will be the so or serial out right on the next clock right this one will move here this one will move here and this one will move here 0 1 right 1 0 right and that 0 will be the output right serial out so here uh, you can see right 0 1 1 1 0 1 1 and this will be the out right so after four clocks we have this scenario right so again a uh, parallel data transfer right so first uh, in the previous uh, scenario we have parallel loading right so here we are talking about parallel data transfer right so you can see that we have two registers that is register Y and here we have another register X right so we have uh, flip-flops right so these are the D flip-flops and they are clocked with the same clock right so you can see that we have the uh, D right so that is the D right and that is also D again x3 is connected with d and uh, data will be loaded right on the arrival of the clock into the register y whenever we have the active active clock edge right those uh, x1 x2 and x3 will be loaded into y1 y2 and y3 respectively right so in uh, another since you can say the data from register X will be stored into the data in register Y right and here we have to compare serial versus parallel data trans transformation right so uh, we talked about shift registers right so you can have shift left register shift right register so we talked about shift right register right so here you can see that we have a data string of data and here we have the serial transformation or serial serial data transfer so one bit will be transferred right at a time on the line right so if we have a line here right and this is uh, you can say uh, register right or the storage element or here we have another storage element so this will be serial out and this is serial in for this unit right and then for the parallel communication right you can see that we have the parallel lines right and on the arrival of the control signal and or clock pulse active clock pulse this data will be transferred in a parallel mode right so you can see we need more lines right uh, if we have for example one two three four five bits and right for each register we have five bits so if we need four five lines right so if, if on the other hand for serial transfer we need only a single line right it is slow but we need uh, less resources so here we need more resources but the communication is faster right 
And uh, whenever we talk about uh, different uh, IOs uh, regarding computer system or regarding the uh, circuitry, there are certain units that uh, have the parallel input, right? And there are certain units that only support serial in out, right? So for that, in order to have uh, an interfacing between serial and parallel units or circuitries, we need to have a parallel to serial conversion, right? So here we have the parallel input, right? So p data is uh, provided parallelly, right? Uh, and then uh, here we have the serial transformation, right? So you can uh, take an example that we have uh, parallel data transfer within those units then uh, for uh, transmitting that data over a long distance, right? So we have a single channel and uh, over that single channel we transmit data serially, right? So you can see uh, this is parallel and this is serial and again we have the conversion, right? So we talked about the multiplexing and demultiplexing. So here you can see that we are multiplexing data from different lines, from different parallel inputs onto a single line. And then we are demultiplexing over there, right? And again, we are having the parallel output, right? So this is the serial and parallel conversion or parallel to serial conversion, right? So if, uh, uh, you can also have uh, serial to parallel conversion, right? So here we have uh, the transfer, right? So we have a register X and uh, then another register Y, right? So this is, uh, here you can see that all the registers are negative edge triggered due to this bubble, right? So here we have uh, the data x2, x1, x0, right, y2, y1, y0, right. So you can see that before the pulse is supplied, we have this data that is residing inside those registers. So on the arrival of the first clock pulse, that bit has to be moved here, right, and that bit has to be moved here, and that bit has to be moved here, right. This is after the first clock, so we have a one here. On the next clock, this one will go here, this zero will move here, and this one will here. And on the third clock pulse, we have one, zero, one, right? So this is the data, actual data that was residing before the active clock pulse is provided, right? So we have the serial data transfer over here. And then here we have another interesting uh, application, right, of the registers. So here we have uh, designed a pattern recogni recognizing circuitry, right? So you can recognize the pattern, right? So uh, here uh, what we need to recognize, we re need to recognize 1001, zero, zero, one, right? So here we have uh, the data in, right? So first, what we need to do, we need to apply the input, right? So that is one, zero, zero, one, right? So, and this is the clock, right? And this is the out. Whenever we have one at the output, it means our desired pattern has been arrived, right? So as long as we have zero as output over here, uh, the pattern has not been recognized yet, right? So these are named as out1, out2, out3, right? So because this is first flip-flop, so out1, second flip-flop, out2, and third flip-flop, out3, out4. So we have four flip-flops, D flip-flops. So on the arrival of the first clock pulse, right? So this is the input, right? So you can see one, zero, zero, one right and this is again zero right so initially we have all zeros so it means all the flip-flops have zero zero inside right 
So on the arrival of the first clock pulse, that one will move here, right? And that zero will move here, and that zero will move here, zero will move here, right? On the arrival of the second clock pulse, that zero move, will move here, one will move here, right? Zero will move here, and this zero will move here, right? This is after. And then uh, on the fourth clock pulse, right? So you can see one, zero, zero, one, right? And these are the four flip-flops, right? So how we have recognized, right? So you can see the logic over here, right? So this out is zero, right? So one, zero, zero, zero. So the ones, they are applied straight away. So on to this AND gate. For zero, we have inverted it, right? So zero, that will be one. Again, zero inverted. For this, we have applied the state output, right? So you can see that we have one, zero, right? So here one, and this is again for zero. We have one here because here we have zero, zero. So we have one here, and this is one. So whenever we have one, it means pat uh, pattern has been recognized, right? So what we need to do, right? If we need to recognize this one, zero, 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 one, one, right? So this is the uh, previous example where we have to recognize one, zero, zero, one, right? So first of all, we have to decide. So here we have four bits, right? So we need four flip-flops, right? So here we have uh, one, two, three, four, five, six bits. So we need six flip-flops, right? And what will be the... So this is uh, for out one, right? And this is out two, zero, right? And this is... So let me draw it again, right? So this is out one. We will straight away provide uh, as it is. And this is out two, right? Inverted. Out three. So one, two, three, inverted. Out four, inverted, right? And out five, as it is, this is five. And out six, uh, let me draw here, six, invert, uh, state away, right? So uh, this is, and we will be having the out. So whenever out is equal to one, it means pa this pattern has been recognized, right? So we need six flip-flops, right? And we need seven clock pulses. So for four bit, we need five clock pulses, right? For seven, one, two, three, four, five, six, right? So these are the six flip-flops for we need seven clock pulses in order to recognize that pattern, right? And here we have uh, another example of a serial adder, right? So here you can see that this is a uh, shift register, right, that is performing the functionality of shift write. So we will provide data here, right, and this is the second shift register, again shift write register, and uh, this is serial out, and serial out is the input for this full letter, right. This is sum, this is carry, these are the two inputs, right, and this is the carry in, right? Right? So, and this is the carry out, right? So this carry out will be stored here at the D flip flop and then on the arrival of next clock pulse, for example, if we have a 4-bit register over there and we need to add this, right? So, 110 and carry out will be one, and that one will be stored here, and on the arrival of next clock pulse, those X and Y, and the carry will be added, right? And if we have a carry, of course, we have a carry again here, that carry will go here, 
again carry out this will be stored here and we next time we have on the arrival of the next clock pulse so each time we are shifting one bit to the left right so first uh, the focus will be here right and then the next bits will be arrived in addition to this carry and then focus will be here and this carry and finally we will be adding right so uh, these are the serial inputs right okay so uh, there are uh, certain advantages uh, although we are adding right each bits right or we can say corresponding bits for starting from 0 1 2 3 right so it mean uh, although the cost is low uh, but uh, it is uh, a bit slower we have to wait right so right so these are dif different advantages and disadvantages advantages uh, of this serial adder right so we have used the flip flop right and then we can construct the same serial adder by using JK flip-flops, right? So in order to design such a circuit, we have to start. Uh, so here we have started from the table, right? State table. And here you can see that we have uh, uh, truth table for JK flip-flop and excitation table for the same JK flip-flop, right? So uh, what we need to do, uh, we need to find out the Boolean expression for, right, right, uh, and focusing on this state table, right. So here you can see that uh, uh, there can be a question that how we have uh, deduced uh, excitation table. So, so you can see that. Uh, we have deduced the excitation table in this way, right? So because here we have a lot of dif uh, different don't care conditions, right? So we have present state inputs. These are the bits which we have to add it, and this is the present state, right? Next state, sum, right? So uh, you can say that this is the uh, one will be mapping carry in, and one will be mapping carry out, right? So after having all this stuff we have to compute the boolean expressions right so here we have uh, xy for jq right for kq we have uh, x bar y bar right and for sum we have uh, zor operation right so x zor with y and uh, zor with q and this is the circuitry right so again here we have the same sort of circuitry, shift register, shift register, right? But the flip-flop has been changed and the combinational logic is also different if I talk about this circuitry. So you can see that we have some different combinational logic, right? We have a ZOR, AND, an NOR, and AND, right? So this is the shift register. And then we have, uh, we can have a sh universal shift register, right? So you can see that we have cascaded different multiplexers, right? So those are the multiplexers and these are the D flip-flops, right? So these are the switches, S0 and S1, right? And uh, we will see that how we can perform shift left and shift right operation, right? So we can have all the operations like loading, shift left, shift right, and read, right? How, right? So we have two switches, right, S1, S0, so on 0, 0, no change, 0, 1, shift right, so you can compute, right, so on having 0, 1 at S1 and S0, we will be having shift right operation, right, which we studied, and on having S1, S0, S1, 0, we have shift left operation, and on having both S1 and S0, 1, 1, we will be having the parallel loading. So this is the universal shift register. And by using that register, we can have all the three functionalities of shift left, shift right, and loading of data.
right? So that's all for today's lecture. So today we talked about registers, right? And how we can construct or develop a register. Actually, we uh, connect or cascade different flip-flops in order to have a register. So we can have uh, registers that can uh, transfer or shift data serially or we can also have registers that can load or uh, transfer data parallelly, right? So normally we use uh, D flip-flops, but we have seen that we can also use other flip-flops, right? So we talked about uh, the advantages and disadvantages of serial and par parallel data transfer, right? And finally, we talked about a universal shift register, right? And by using that sh register, we can have three different functionalities uh, that are combined in a single uh, circuitry. We can sh have shift left, shift right, and we can have the loading of data. So that's all. And uh, Meri Tarasya Allah Hafiz. Assalamu alaikum.